Episode 1 The Healing Photograph In the very first chapter of his life story, Yogananda alleges that he was cured from Asiatic cholera at the age of eight years old because of a unique and blessed photograph of his parents' guru, Lahiri Mahasaya. Excerpts from Chapter 1 My Parents and Early Life Lahiri Mahasaya left this world shortly after I had entered it. His picture in an ornate frame always graced our family altar in the various cities to which father was transferred by his office. Many a morning and evening found mother and me meditating before an improvised shrine, offering flowers dipped in fragrant sandalwood paste with frankincense and myrrh as well as our united devotions. We honored the divinity which had found full expression in Lahiri Mahasaya. His picture had a surpassing influence over my life. As I grew, the thought of the master grew with me. In meditation, I would often see his photographic image emerge from its small frame and taking a living form sit before me. When I attempted to touch the feet of his luminous body, it would change and again become the picture. As childhood slipped into boyhood, I found Lahiri Masaya transformed in my mind from a little image cribbed in a frame to a living, enlightening presence. I frequently prayed to him in moments of trial or confusion, finding within me his solacing direction. At first I grieved because he was no longer physically living. As I began to discover his secret omnipresence, I lamented no more. He had often written to those of his disciples who were over-anxious to see him. Why come to view my bones and flesh when I am ever within range of your kutasta, spiritual sight? I was blessed about the age of eight with a wonderful healing through the photograph of Lahiri Masaya. This experience gave intensification to my love. While at her family estate in Ichapur, Bengal, I was stricken with Asiatic cholera. My life was despaired of. The doctors could do nothing. At my bedside, mother frantically motioned me to look at Lahiri Mahasaya's picture on the wall above my head. Bow to him mentally. She knew I was too feeble even to lift my hands in salutation. If you really show your devotion and inwardly kneel before him, your life will be spared. I gazed at his photograph and saw there a blinding light enveloping my body in the entire room. My nausea and other uncontrollable symptoms disappeared. I was well. At once I felt strong enough to bend over and touch mother's feet in appreciation of her immeasurable faith in her guru. Mother pressed her head repeatedly against the little picture. O oh, omnipresent master, I thank thee that thy light hath healed my son. I realized that she too had witnessed the luminous blaze through which I had instantly recovered from a usually fatal disease. One of my most precious possessions is that same photograph, given to Father by Lahiri Mahasaya himself. It carries a holy vibration. A Skeptical Analysis First, it should be noted that cholera is a very dangerous bacterial infection and can, if untreated, lead to premature death. However, in Yogananda's retelling, many pertinent details are left out. Yet he admits that doctors were called and they attended to him. But we are not told about what treatments were administered and for how long. The World Health Organization estimates that up to 80% of cholera cases can be successfully treated with oral rehydration solution. Thus, if Yogananda was indeed being treated by competent doctors and was receiving enough fluid, statistically, he had nearly a 4 out of 5 chance of surviving. Yet Yogananda doesn't attribute his healing to any medical intervention since he writes, my life was despaired of, the doctors could do nothing. However, this incident happened when he was only eight years old, and one wonders how long it really took him to recover, since his wording suggests it was immediate. My nausea and other uncontrollable symptoms disappeared. I was well, 
that once I felt strong enough to bend over and touch my mother's feet in appreciation of her immeasurable faith in her guru. Yogananda is very clear in arguing that the holy picture of Lahiri Mahasaya was the catalyst for his instant healing. Bow to him mentally. She knew I was too feeble even to lift my hands in salutation. If you really show your devotion and inwardly kneel before him, your life will be spared. I gazed at his photograph and saw there a blinding light enveloping my body in the entire room. He even goes so far as to claim that the photograph carries a holy vibration. Clearly, and this is not even disputed by Self-Realization Fellowship followers, what is elemental in this particular episode is the love and devotion that both Yogananda and his mother, Gyana Prabhagosh, had for Lahiri Mahasaya. What is more likely? That a picture of a holy guru has the power to heal cholera or that medical treatment combined with deep faith and belief was instrumental in relieving Yogananda's infection. This comes into even sharper relief when we stop to consider how powerful the placebo effect is in medicine, since it has shown to be efficacious in patients suffering from depression, pain, and even severe bowel discomfort. The Harvard Medical School goes so far as to suggest that your mind can be a powerful healing tool when given the chance. The idea that your brain can convince your body a fake treatment is the real thing, the so-called placebo effect, and thus stimulate healing has been around for millennia. Now, science has found that under the right circumstances, a placebo can be just as effective as traditional treatments. The placebo effect is more than positive thinking. Believing a treatment or procedure will work. It's about creating a stronger connection between the brain and body and how they work together, says Professor Ted Katchuk of Harvard-affiliated Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, whose research focuses on the placebo effect. Remember that Gyana Prabha Ghosh instructs her son to bow to the picture of her beloved guru, since apparently her faith alone was insufficient to generate a healing. Thus, it is up to Yogananda to firmly believe that something miraculous can occur, which naturally brings us back to how his own mental state can help augment medical treatment. As Kendrick Cherry elucidates in the article, how the placebo effect works in psychology. Other possible explanations include conditioning, motivation, and expectation. In some cases, a placebo can be paired with an actual treatment until it comes to evoke the desired effect, an example of classical conditioning. People who are highly motivated to believe that a treatment will work or who had a treatment work previously may be more likely to experience a placebo effect a prescribing physician's enthusiasm for treatment can even impact how a patient responds. If a doctor seems very positive that a treatment will have a desirable effect, a patient may be more likely to see benefits from taking the drug. This demonstrates that the placebo effect can even take place when a patient is taking real medications to treat an illness. Moreover, the very notion of a holy picture eliciting a miraculous outcome is not unique to Yogananda. Most recently, the Roman Catholic Church has accepted that a photograph of Mother Teresa and a medallion she touched were instrumental in removing a tumor from a woman in West Bengal, India, Sarah Cutler elaborates. In 1998, Monica Bezra went to a missionaries of charity home in West Bengal, India, as she had a fever headaches, vomiting, and swollen stomach. She had begun treatment for tuberculous meningitis the year before. However, the medications she'd taken, intermittently, depending on what her family could afford, hadn't kept the lump from growing in her abdomen, though some reports have described Bezra as suffering from cancerous tumors. The growth could have been caused by tuberculosis. Surgery was deemed necessary but Bezer was too weak and unwell to undergo an operation. 
On September 5th, Bezra was praying in the Missionaries Charity Chapel when she saw a light emanating from a photo of Mother Teresa. Later, a medallion that had touched Mother Teresa's body was placed on Bezra's abdomen, and a sister said a prayer while asking Mother Teresa for help. Bezra awoke early the next day to find her tumor had disappeared. Medical exams showed the abdominal mass was no longer there, and the doctors she'd seen agreed Bezra no longer required surgery. Therefore, it is not unreasonable to suggest that Yogananda and Monica Bezra's remarkable recoveries are not supernatural, but were due to their devotional faith, medical intervention, and the power of the placebo effect. Simply put, photographs of holy personages don't have a magical talisman power, whereas the human mind, under the right conditions, does. <laughs>